Hi friend. When it comes to marketing your yoga business, it is an ongoing thing that has to happen consistently. However, it doesn't have to run your life. By planning 90 days at a time, it actually allows you to look ahead and plan ahead, but also be flexible. And this is something that I talk about a lot inside my membership and with the yoga teachers that I work with. So what I did is I actually hosted a free training on this topic, and this is the peek behind the curtain. In this episode, you're going to hear the training, but you're not going to hear the Q&A at the end. For all of that, all you have to do is go to marketingyogawithconfidence.com forward slash learn. And once you put in your email address, you get to watch the replay instantly. That includes all of the Q&A. It's so good. I want you to go and check it out. But in this episode, I will be sharing the actual training. So you're gonna get a lot of the goods, just not all of it. And that's because there's also a PDF that goes along with this training that I want you to get access to. And since you're listening to a podcast episode, I can't do that unless you give me your email address. So go ahead and get access to that free training replay and that PDF. But before I share the training, I want to welcome you to the Marketing Yoga with Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Amanda McKinney, and I absolutely love that you are here with me today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to this podcast. That tells me that you're looking to grow your yoga business, and I love that about you. So I want you to take this information in and allow it to work for your business. And this episode is brought to you by the replay of the live training. So remember to get access to the entire thing by going to marketingyogawithconfidence.com forward slash learn. So now let's dive in and listen to that training. Hello, friends. I'm so excited you're here today. Thank you for joining me. I see a few people saying hello. Hi, Marianne, and hi, Allison. So glad you're here. And Allison, I see you have a pup with you, too. I have one snoring over here and one down here. Tam's here, too. It's fun that we all have our dogs lounging around with us and learning, too. So I like to think of them as my work buddies, for sure. Okay, so we are going to get started really quickly today. So thank you for being here because this one is packed. So as you know, this is a part of a series of four free trainings. So it's very similar. There's going to be a few slides at the very beginning. If you joined me with last week, you'll notice the repetitiveness of the first few slides, but hang with me. There's lots of new content. And this one has a lot of information. So I ask that you continue to keep the chat going. Feel free to chat with each other and keep the conversation going as you're learning. That helps you digest information. If you have a question, I want you to use it's I believe it's just under um, the screen. It looks like it it is for me. It says, ask a question. And I want you to use that as how I will answer questions at the very end of this training because I won't catch them in the chat. So do me a huge favor. Make sure you use that ask a question feature and ask all the questions you can and I will catch them at the very end. So let's dive in and make sure you've downloaded the PDF. It's a green button right below the screen as well. For this training, you definitely want to get that. This one is super important. It's a long PDF. When I made it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is the longest PDF ever. But it's packed full of information and I want you to have it as you're going through this. You can just write in a notebook too if you want, but PDF is very helpful. All right, I'm going to share my screen and... Okay, I'm gonna keep my face a little small as I go through this, and then I will make it bigger when I'm answering questions. So today we are talking about how to create a 90-day content plan for marketing your yoga offering. So when I say content, I wanna set the stage really early on and say content is anything that you are releasing out into the world to share with your audience. So that means blogs, podcasts, social media posts, anything that you can think of, the words you're communicating out, that is your content. So let's dive right in and think about this. 
what if you knew what you were going to share and post for the next 90 days? And I want you to know that obviously this is very possible because we're going to be talking about it today. And I want to make sure that I say at the very beginning that I know that thinking 90 days out can be overwhelming. So just promise me that you're going to give this a shot and know that I'm here with you. And I'm going to break this down for you because I know it can be overwhelming, but it's super, super, super helpful. But as you know, this training is for you because I know that feeling of overwhelm and I know who you are because I work with yoga teachers every single day, just like you. And I know that you love seeing other people's inspirational content and you are absorbing that information. You are taking it in. You are looking at other people's content. I also know that you love teaching but you probably don't love coming up with your own content because it feels overwhelming. And thinking about one post, what I hear often is that yoga teachers will say, oh, Amanda, I sit at my computer or I'm looking at my phone and I don't know what to post on social media or I don't know what to say, but you know, I can't even think about 90 days when I can't think of one social media post. But I got you. We are going to go through this together. I promise. So after this training, you are going to know the process of planning for 90 days, but more importantly, you're going to understand why this process works and how you can adjust it for you. Because this is this is the, the process of like, I'm going to show you the baseline, right? I'm going to show you the baseline of this is what works, but you're going to tweak it and adjust it for what works for your business. So that's really important to note. And I know you're going to take action because the steps are outlined for you. And if there's anything I know about amazingly driven yoga teachers, it's that if I lay out a plan, you will absolutely do it because you are super driven and ready to take action. So if I have not met you before, I am super excited you're here. My name is Amanda McKinney, and I am the founder of Marketing Yoga with Confidence, and that is a membership and a podcast, and I love what I do, but that's just one hat that I wear. I'm also a wife and a stepmom and a dog mom, as I mentioned earlier, and I am a yoga teacher. I did get my certification not quite a year ago, but in this past year, I did graduate from yoga teacher training and I learned about you so much when I was going through that process. I'm also a Floridian in Oklahoma, so I'm usually cold. That's what that means pretty much. But I grew up in Florida, ended up in Oklahoma, and that's where I am today. And I love, absolutely love working with yoga teachers and sharing really simple steps that you can take each and every day in your business to help move you forward in your business. So before we go into the steps, which there are 10 of them today, I want you to make me a commitment. And that is it's something that I like to do at each and every one of these free trainings. It's that I want you to commit to taking this next step, and I want you to give this method a try. I know, I'm going to say this over and over, I know it can be overwhelming, but I need you to give it a try because just like having a yoga practice, probably if you're anything like me, learning to teach a yoga class felt really overwhelming. And super, super, super overwhelming. I didn't want to get up in front of people and, and encourage them to move their right hand to the other side of the mat. It was just very scary for me. But it does get easier the more we do something. And I know that you know this because you are a yoga teacher, and I guarantee that you can remember that nervous feeling at the very beginning. So know that it's a process that if you give it a shot, it will get better, and you will find what works for you. This process that I'm going to share with you today, you're going to get everything started and then figure out what works for you. And I just want you to keep that promise to yourself. I want you to promise right now that you will commit to trying this and then do it for the next 90 days. I promise it'll be so helpful in your business. And I'm going to share the formula right at the beginning before we even get into the steps so you understand all of what I'm talking about. Because I promise to always share the why this works so well, why this is a great method to try. And the idea behind this is that you produce one piece of content that's a longer piece of content. I'm going to get into the details 
in the next step or two. But you're going to pr produce one piece of content that will then filter out and become other things. Not only does this keep everything really consistent and everyone thinks like, oh my gosh, she really knows what she's talking about. It also saves your sanity because you're producing one piece of content and then just pulling out little nuggets for the other things. So while it seems like, oh, I need to post this many times on social media or I'm sending an email, what it does is it allows one piece of content to really serve all of these other things. Are you with me? I want to see a thumbs up, some emojis, all that good stuff, like popping up in the comments, because I just want to make sure everyone's still hanging with me and focusing on understanding. All right. I see some emojis. Thank you so much. I love seeing that. Okay, so step number one is identifying your main piece of content. So that was that big block at the top. The, the main piece of content is one of a few options because there's really not that many options that you can have. And it's basically text, audio, or video, okay? So you can decide what that means for you, but pick the thing that is the easiest for you right now. And I want to give myself as the example because I can show you how I have evolved. When I first started my business, I wrote a blog. There was no video. There was no audio. And I wrote the blog. And this allowed me to start becoming consistent with producing content. I wrote. I don't know how many people were reading it. Not many. I do know that. But what it did is it allowed me to create content and get that going and, and get that rhythm. So I was producing content and I didn't start weekly, but I started monthly and then worked my way up to weekly, which is what I'll talk about in a minute. But I started writing and then I recognized, you know what? I think video is where I need to be. So then I made the blog a video blog. And then from there, I recognized that you, my dear dream student, yoga teachers really like to listen to podcasts. So instead of watching me, it's better to listen to me because you're usually in your car. <laughs> so I then switched it to a podcast. So what I want you to do and make sure in the PDF, you're going through this workbook together as we're going through this process. And I want you to identify, pick one. I don't want you to do more than one of these things. Pick writing a blog, producing a podcast, or producing some sort of a video that you'll most likely put on YouTube. Decide what that is right now for step number one. Then step number two is identifying the frequency. So you heard me say I started monthly and then moved to weekly. So here are the options for producing the frequency of your main piece of content. You can start monthly and that's totally okay. Now, what I want to tell you is that eventually I would like you to get to a weekly content rotation because you will have more to say and it does help grow your business faster. But I don't want you to start there if you haven't done this yet because it can feel really, really overwhelming if you think about producing a long piece of content every single week. So do yourself a favor and start less frequent, frequently and start with monthly or every other week. Because what matters more than frequency is consistency. You will feel more successful if you keep your promise to yourself and say, I will produce one blog every single month. All it is is 12. You and I can get together on a call for one hour and we can hammer out 12 ideas where you can have all your blogs written for a whole year. I promise you that we could do that. So make it really simple for yourself and pick that frequency. So right now, I want you to identify how often you can do this. And again, remember to be realistic with yourself and figure out what that is. So once you have the main piece of content and how often it's going to happen, then you identify the other marketing channels. So remember those, the branches that came down from the big, the big chunk, the branches came down. So what you're going to do is pick one or two social media platforms, two at the most. Like make this easy. You can absolutely pick one. You do not have to be in a lot of different places. <laughs> you just need to be somewhere where you're already established and very much that this is important, where your dream student is. If you don't know who your dream student is, I want you to get my free guide. It's on my website and I will just go to um, 
marketing yoga with confidence forward slash learn. And you'll be able to find the free guide on niching down. But you want to keep this really simple for yourself. So I really want to encourage you to have an email list and start sending emails. And then I want you to pick some social media platform that has a live component. So you can go live on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So YouTube is not a social media platform, but you can go live. So what I want you to do is think about going live because it will help your confidence in being on video and you don't have to edit it. It's the magic formula here is not dealing with editing. So I want you to keep it really, really simple for yourself. Okay, so now that you know, I want you to remember to pick those channels. I'm going to encourage you to pick email, but I want you to pick one or two other ones. And then you create a template. And on this note, steps one through seven are the steps that you don't have to repeat later. You're going to get everything set up, and then you only have to take action on eight, nine, and ten on a recurring basis. So, so step number four is creating a template and I've got a template for you, but I want you to feel empowered to do whatever works for you. Okay. I want to make that really, really, really clear that you can create whatever works for you. You don't have to use what I share today, whatever works for your brain. I want you to do it, but here on the next slide, you'll see what you should include on the template. But you want to use like Google Docs or a spreadsheet, like whatever works for you. I do encourage digital because if you write it in a notebook, you can lose that notebook. There are more times that I've heard people losing a notebook than I hope to count ever again. So make sure that you're thinking about what you can actually see and track. And I really want you to think about doing this in a digital way, but make it really easy for you to use because if it's complicated, you're not going to use it. So here's an idea. This is the template that I've created for you and it's a piece of paper. So yes, I just said, don't write this in a notebook, but this is just giving you a piece of paper that you can write on right now and figure out, okay, this is what I'm going to do. But what you want to identify is the main topic for the month which we'll talk about in the next step, what day of the week you will be emailing your list, what days you'll be posting on social media, and what day you're going live. Remember those, those branches. We need to identify the days of the week that we will be going live. Now, for this example, I'm going to assume you have weekly content. If you don't have weekly content, then you're going to break this up in a different way, which I do explain in the PDF. But the reason that I'm talking about weekly content is because eventually you're going to get there and I want you to see how this can easily happen for you. So this is what you would want to see in your template. So I, whatever your template is, if it's a spreadsheet, I've tried spreadsheets before and I know they work really well for some people. Some people, you could just create a Google Doc and it works. Whatever works for you, make it easy on yourself. So now we're going to talk about step five, which is the decision to make in terms of what your content will be on. And I'm going to highly suggest, unless it just doesn't fit with your model, that you think about monthly themes. And I say this because it's so much easier. So monthly themes is basically what it sounds like. So let's say, for an example, your monthly theme for the month of November is flexibility. So each week in November, you would talk about something to do with flexibility. This makes it so easy to start. Remember my example of I started with a blog, a written blog, and that's exactly how I started was, OK, I'm going to talk about using Facebook as a marketing platform for the whole month of November. And I would talk about different elements of Facebook in the weeks of November. So that's how I want you to get started. Now, if that doesn't really resonate with you, the idea of content pillars is something you'll eventually get to later on in your business, I'm certain, because you'll figure out what you want to talk about. But if themes doesn't work for you, I like to give another option. And it's this idea of content pillars. <laughs> so the idea of content pillars is like this image. It's a pillar that holds up something. So think about a table, right? The table legs hold up the table. Those content pillars are what hold up your business. What do you talk about? 
your dream student, let's say that you are focused on pelvic health. I know several of you in my membership are focused on that. And so what if you're talking about pelvic health and that is your what you're going to be talking about? Now, within pelvic health, you probably talk about a few different things. You might talk about knowing your body, the knowledge of understanding what's going on. And you might talk, so that's more like an educational basis. Or you might talk about certain poses. So there's alignment maybe. What you'll find is that there's a few things, I suggest two to four, because two will give you at least a rotation of every other week, right? And then four, because if you do more than that, it can get really confusing if you have too many elements as a pillar. I know this one is a little bit harder to grasp, but I like to give the two options. But if the content pillars is like, Amanda, I don't understand, go with the monthly theme. Pick a theme and go with it, and you will identify the pillars later on in your business for sure. So step number six is creating an ideas document on Google Drive. So this is a big one, and I don't want you to skip this step because a lot of people will, and I don't want you to. The concept here is that I want you to have a place one place, as a matter of fact, just one, that you write down ideas. Because if there's anything that I know about content, it's that we get this blinking cursor syndrome, whether it's our computer or we're at our phone, and we don't know what to write. I never want you to have this happen to you again, ever. So after today, you will never have this happen again if you have this ideas document. I promise you, you won't have it happen because you will have ideas coming at you all the time and you'll constantly be adding to this. So my goal for you is for you to create a Google document. It can be a bulleted list. It can be, I don't even care. If no one else is going to see this. This is an ideas document, right? You can take a screenshot of something and put it in there. You can write text, whatever it is that you get an idea from, I want you to write it down. A great idea for this is to think about what questions your students ask. When someone comes up to you after class and they ask you a question, how exactly can I get into that pose again? Can you remind me of that? Write that down. Then that's a great piece of content that you could create. Maybe someone asks you, you know, what can I do at home in between classes to be better prepared for the next class? great piece of content. So these are the things I want you to think about. And maybe you see something on Instagram or you see someone else producing a piece of content that you're like, oh, that's so good. I could do that for my audience too. Write it down, put it down. Because the thing is, you'll see it and think you'll remember it, but you won't. You will get in front of that blinking cursor and think, I don't know what to write. So I want you to have this document and then you will have one place to always go to and have an idea for content. Deal? Okay. And then I'm going to get you started here <laughs> with brainstorming. This is step number seven. So this is the last of the setup session or the setup steps. And it's brainstorming ideas for your theme or content pillars. So let's just think of ideas here. And I've got a list of questions for you for sure. But what I want you to do, not right now, <laughs> Not right now at all. I want you to take this list, open up the Google Doc, and I want you to set a timer for 20 minutes after this, like not right now, obviously. And then I want you to just write ideas. Have you seen another yoga teacher do something that you thought was really cool? Great. Write it down. I want you to go through these questions and answer them. Maybe you think about 20 other questions as I ask these. So I want you to go through these questions and start to answer all of them in this document. Now you don't have to write the content. I just want you to write down the idea. Maybe you start a little outline. It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you have something to go to when it's time to create that content. So I wanna see some comments. This is, a, this is a big one for me. I want to see the comment and say, yes, I'm committed to setting a timer for 20 minutes to do this and starting this document. So write it in the comments for sure. Okay. 
Step number eight. Thank you, Megan. She is committed. I like it. It's so important. So, so very important. I like it, Jocelyn. Yes. Yes. So good. Thank you so much. That is such a big step because once you have this list of ideas, it's just a huge, huge, huge game changer. I promise you. Trust me. That blinking cursor has nothing on you now. And Tam is saying, yes, I'm going to open my open my Google Docs again. Good job. <laughs> I love it. And once you have it, you can have the app on your phone. You can always be adding it. You can definitely use another system. I just don't suggest paper because then it's not one place. We want one place where you keep your, your ideas in one place. Okay, so step number eight. Good job, Suzanne. You're committed to. I like it. So step number eight, this is what starts with um, what you're going to repeat on an ongoing basis. So after like you've already done one through seven, you don't have to do those again, right? You might revise and see how frequently you want to do, to release your content, that sort of thing. But you've pretty much done all the one through seven. Now steps seven or eight, nine, and 10 are what you will repeat. So this is when you're starting to fill out your template. So I'm going to go a little bit slower through these since you've got the setup now, now we're going to digest this information about filling out this template on an ongoing basis. So what you need to do is pick out the main topics. So again, for this example, we're going to be talking about weekly. So what you would need is 12 main topics. That's four per month. But if you're working monthly, there's going to be three main topics for 90 days because that's three months. If you're doing bi-monthly, meaning every other week, you'll have six main topics because it's two per month. Deal? Okay. So in the PDF, it explains this in great detail and it gives you little boxes that make it really clear if you're a visual learner like myself. So let's go back to that idea of having the monthly theme of flexibility. So I'm going to assume that you're talking about flexibility for the month of November. And this is our 30-day plan. Super simple here. So the idea is that for each week, you will talk about something to do with flexibility. So I would suggest pick a pose. Pick one pose and highlight that pose. And here could be your formula. Feel free to take this and run with it. You could have the formula be what the pose is, why it helps with flexibility, and the benefits of this pose overall. See, that's pretty short, but it's really clear and super helpful to the person who's reading, listening, or watching your content. They will understand not only how to get in and out of the pose, but they'll understand why. Why should I do this pose? If there's anything I can impress upon you, it's that we as humans just do better when we understand the why. You know, when you want to, you don't want to do something. So I, I feel like there's always things that we don't want to do in life, right? I don't love going to the dentist. So I don't love it. I would probably put it off if I didn't understand the why. The why is health, right? Like we need to be healthy. I need to go to the dentist every six months to have a cleaning. And I need to take care of my teeth because otherwise it can cause a string of health issues. So I understand the why. So I go to the dentist and I don't love it, but I go, right? But I understand the why. So tell someone the why behind why this pose. Why should they give this pose a try? And why should they do it on an ongoing basis? So that's what you would do each and every week. So that's what it is, is coming up with your main piece of content. And again, all you're doing right now is outlining this. You're not writing the content. You're outlining this content, okay? Then step number nine is adding in those other marketing channels that you've already identified. So email and the social media channels, maybe one or two. So let's look at how that would look. And we want to, I want to make sure that you, you hear this and know that it's okay if you need to alter this based on how frequently your content is actually coming out. But if you're producing content weekly, then I want you to Talk about that content no less than two times a week on social media. And here's the reason. Again, I'm going to share the why. 
if you are putting your time and effort into producing content, you're writing that blog, you are recording that podcast, or you're recording that video, that is time and energy that you are putting into this. If you do not tell people about it, they can't see it. So it would be a waste of your time to be doing this if you're not telling people about it. I wish that this was not the case, but I work with so many people, myself included. I want to call myself out. This is just how it works. We have something in our brain that thinks like, I'll produce the content and assume like people will just find it, right? Like they'll just find it. No, they won't. (laughs) They won't find it at all. And I know this because I worked on that weekly blog for so long and no one was finding it. And it was because I wasn't talking and telling people about it. So we have to remember to actually share the content once we've created it. This is the other portion of including that live component. And there's a reason why I've picked that. Yes, live can feel so scary. I know it can. Trust me, trust me. I have a video challenge. Feel free to check that out on my website. That will help you on the video stuff because I totally understand how scary it is. But live video is what's getting traction right now. So if you do that, you will see more traction with your content. So I want you to go live about it, if at all possible. And then, of course, I want you to send an email. And that, I also know that email can be scary and a little, you know, make us feel a little bit vulnerable as well. The thing is, is that we don't own social media. Meaning if Facebook or Instagram decided to go away tomorrow, we can't do anything about it. And if that's the only way we were communicating with our dream student, our potential students, we would have no way of connecting with them. So we really want to get them on our email list so that we have that connection with them as well. So make sure that you're thinking about email. And if you're not quite there yet, I really want to encourage you to get there. But just just know that this gives you the content because (coughs) I'm so sorry. I've got a tickle in my throat. Most people are not necessarily concerned about sending an email. They're concerned about coming up with the content. So just know that you've got the content figured out already. So sorry about this tickle. Thanks for hanging with me. Okay, so then what you will do is you will update your template. So whatever template you're using, and it would look something like this. So this is what, this is a sample idea, what you could do. And feel free, take this idea. You don't have to recreate the wheel here, but you could release your content on Monday, whatever that is, podcast, blog, video, whatever. You release it on Monday, and then you send an email on Tuesday, You also have two social media posts. You do one on Monday, one on Thursday, and then you do a live video on Wednesday. You don't have to do these days, but feel free to take them if it's helpful for you. But the idea is that you'll be really consistent. And with this, what I want you to remember is that the reason that I am saying identify the day, it is because when you have a clear picture of what you will do, you can take that action. But if you say to me, okay, Amanda, I'm going to write a blog every single week and that's it, right? Like I'm just going to write a a blog every single week and I'll talk about it on social media. That is not a plan at all. And I adore you, but that is not, that would not fly if you and I were on a conversation and that's what you told me you would do. No way. Everyone here that is in my membership can vouch for this. I would call you out and say, no way, Jose. We are going to be coming up with a much clearer plan. So what I would want you to to do is to identify when that blog is coming out, when exactly you are going to be talking about it on social media, and making a promise to yourself to try this and to commit to this for a certain amount of time. Remember, you can adjust. You're not locked into this plan forever. Trust me, I'm going to go through an example of my own and show you how I'm really flexible with mine now. But I have a very ingrained rhythm of when I produce new content and how I 
share it with my audience. So I am able to be more flexible now because I know it will still happen because it's a routine and it's a habit. So I've been doing this for over a year. You will get there, but you have to start with a little bit more of a container. And I also know that that's not really comfortable for a lot of people saying like, you have to do this on this day and that feels not good. But I promise it's just like a yoga practice. If someone says, I want you to get on your mat five, five minutes a day, then you can do it for as long or as little as you want to later. But I need you to start with this routine. Then that's what that's basically what I'm saying is like I'm giving you this baseline and then you can figure out what works best for you. So this is an example and this is from this week. So I am a little flexible with mine, remember. But what I do is I release my podcast episode on Monday and it goes out. It is pre-scheduled and that is something that will happen without fail every single week because it's worked on in advance. And on that note, you can schedule so much of this. If you have a blog, you can schedule it. If you have a video that you put out on YouTube, you can schedule that. If you have a podcast, you can schedule it. So you can make sure that your content is released the same time each week. And then without fail, I email my list every single Tuesday. So I release the content on Monday and I email my list every Tuesday. That does not change ever. Like since I set that in stone, like that is the process that I use every single week. Now, what I will say is that I am flexible with myself on the other three things. I might post on different days and go live on a different day, but I make sure to post twice a week and go live once a week. So it just depends on what works with my schedule. Sometimes I can't go live on certain days, but for an example, I would post a link to the podcast episode on Tuesday as well. I would go live on Wednesday and then on Thursday, I would pull a quote from the podcast episode and share that quote. So this is all related to Facebook. I also use Instagram as well, but it gives you an idea of how one piece of content, it's not like I'm recreating the wheel here. I'm not, you know, coming up with new content. A lot of people will say, Amanda, you post all the time, but it's really simple to post all the time and not everyone has to do that. But it's easy to post all the time when you have this content that you're producing and all you're doing is pulling out little snippets, right? It makes life way easier when you do it this way (laughs) and you actually get more done because everything minus the live can be pre-scheduled. So showing up live is the thing that you have to do in real time, but the rest of the things you can actually schedule. How's that feeling to everyone? I'm not seeing any comments. Let me know how things are going. And I see that a few questions are coming in. So make sure to add um, all of your questions because I'm going to leave as much time as possible to go through questions because we're almost done. And step number 10 is implementing. So don't plan all this stuff and not do it. Do yourself a favor. Again, like... Please don't do all of, the, all of the planning and create the content or think about the content and write the outline for the content and not record the video or the podcast or write the actual blog. Don't do that to yourself. You remember, you committed at the beginning of this to try. So I want you to implement everything. And the way that this works is if you plan for it. I know that not everyone is a planner like myself. But I promise, promise, promise you that if you can just give planning a try for a little bit, you will pick up and figure out what works for you and you won't have to live in a rigid plan all the time, but I promise it will help you actually do this and grow your business because creation of content is a wonderful way to grow your business. It's not the only way. I want to be clear with that. It's not the only way to do it. But it's a great way because as a yoga teacher, you want to give, you want to share. If there's anything I know about yoga teachers, it's that you want to share with your students. You want to give free yoga to people, right? Like this is your way. When I have so many yoga teachers say like, well, I don't want to not 
give yoga, like I want to give a discount for all these classes. No, no, you deserve to be paid what you are worth, not you are worth, but your time is worth when it comes to having a private session or a public class or whatever your offering is. But this is your way to give back for free. Produce the video and let someone have a home practice that you want to serve for free. Walk someone through with your words on a blog and share a home meditation practice for someone or produce a podcast or some sort of audio content that people can listen to. Like this is your chance to give your stuff away, (laughs) to like share yoga for free. This is it. So please use this as an opportunity to give and share yoga to those of the the people that can't afford your classes or your private sessions or whatever it is, because one day hopefully they can, and they can then help you serve more people by paying for that private session. But this, I just want you to do this. I want you to really commit to implementing this plan. And then all you have to do is repeat that, right? So if you plan, all you'd have to do, so we talked about a 90-day plan. I walked you through a 30-day. You would just repeat that for the next 30 days and the next 30 days. The reason that I talk about 90 days at a time is because I love for all of you to look ahead. Look ahead, not just one month, because one month is great to, you'll dive in and actually create the content week by week, right? But what I want you to think about is, okay, in the next three months, do I have a workshop coming up, right? Because if it's it's November right now, let's say you have a January workshop, then I want you to plan some content that will lead to the sell of that workshop. Does that make sense? So if you have a new year workshop at the beginning of January in December, I sure want you to start creating content that's going to talk about goal setting and thinking about the new year intention, if that's what your workshop is going to be about. So make sure that you are thinking that three months ahead, it really, really helps. And it helps your content. It makes everything so much easier. If you're like, oh, I'm going to have a workshop once a quarter. Perfect. Guess what? You just have, you have several months already planned out because it's at least once a quarter of content, right? So hopefully that really helps. And I know you can do this. If you don't, I know you can do this. And I know you can do this because I have witnessed it so many times. Yoga teachers have told me that the system works and that they can do this. And so I know you can too. It's very, it's a very simple fact that I know. And if you get stuck, I always like to mention because I'm kind of terrible about talking about it, um, but I have one hour sessions. Every single Wednesday, I meet with yoga teachers. And I had a great day yesterday meeting with yoga teachers that have booked with me. So if you ever get stuck, just know you can book a one hour session. And I guarantee, there is not many things I guarantee, but I know that we can come up with content because I've done it so many times. So book that hour, I promise we'll come up with your content for certain and get you on the right track. So let's definitely stay connected if we aren't already. And now it's time for questions. So are you pumped and ready to plan your next 90 days of marketing? I sure hope so. And I hope that you act on that excitement. There is nothing like taking action when you're excited and pumped up about something. So your next step is to go to marketingyogawithconfidence.com forward slash learn to get instant access to the live free training replay. That way you hear the Q&A at the end so you can gain even more insight and you'll also get that PDF that has all the information. So then you can look back on it and not have to think about listening to an entire podcast episode again. Then it's time to take action and I want you to show up and do the work because I absolutely promise that if you commit to showing up consistently and marketing your yoga business, that everything gets easier absolutely everything. So I want you to promise yourself that you'll show up and until next time, give yourself permission to plan ahead and grace along the way. Talk to you soon.